Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is the first of a new group of tutorials which will be appearing every so often in which we're going to be looking at some of the hidden details of Expresso and I'm calling these Expresso nuts and bolts. And on this occasion we're going to be looking at the operator. Now at the moment you can see that I've got an, a, just a null over here that I've named Expresso. I've given it a an Expresso tag and in the window here I've got a range mapper. Now, if we click on the range mapper here, we can see that it's got an awful lot of functionality, a heck of a lot. I mean, we've got a load of stuff up here. We've also got uh, a graphical display here for a spline and all of the functionality that can control that beneath it. I mean, normally we just concentrate on working here, don't we? Because if we click on the input stage here, we've got input lower and upper, we've got output lower and upper. We also have a grayed out input because we've got nothing connected here at the moment and we've got a spline input here which we've never used either and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on that actually but that one's for another day. So we haven't really got an awful lot on offer from the range mapper here when it comes to controlling all of this stuff within it. So wouldn't it be good if we could actually get a hold of some of this stuff and start working? I mean for example it would be nice if we could control this spline and maybe animate it. That would be really cool wouldn't it? So how do we go about doing this? Well, up here we've got an icon and this is the operator. Now, you be forgiven for thinking that it is nothing more than a, a graphical representation of this node. But no, it, it's, it's something you can drag in. You, if you get a hold of it, drag, drag it into the window here and then open it up. We actually get something that looks almost like a replica of what we've got beneath it. But if we come to the input stage here and we come down to no properties, if we just click on the range mapper again we can see in the node properties all of this data over on the right hand side here is there it's all available to us so that's there but furthermore if we come down to parameter and go down to the bottom here we've got the spline so we've got the tension and we've also got the positions of the x or the, the position x and y of each of the points so we've got points one to four and we've also got the controls for tangents. So we've got tangents left, tangent right. Now that depends on the type of spline that it is. I mean, at the moment, I've got this in cubic mode for the interpolation here. So there's no tangents available to us. But if it was in spline mode, then we get the tangents back and we can do some work with those. But I'm, I'm just using it in cubic mode. But yeah, I mean, all of that functionality is stored within the operator. So that's what you need to do. Drag that in and then you can start doing some work. Right, well I just mentioned the possibility of animating the spline, so let's have a go at that and see if we can make it happen. What I'll do, I'll click on my Expresso here, add user data, and let's see if we can get some functionality going here. So the first thing we're going to call my data will be point to x. So this will be the x position of point two. The interface will make a float slider the unit a real value and we'll say 0.001 for the step. We'll make it a very fine step. Now the limit minimum and maximum, we want the minimum here to be 0.2. It has to be a value between 0 and 1 uh, for the X and Y controls. So we'll say 0.2 there and a maximum of 0.4 and we'll set a default value to 0.3 and then clamp these two values. We don't necessarily need to, but we will. So that's the first piece of data done. I'm going to just copy this down and change this to 0.3 x and also change this data here. Don't get called out and, and forget to change these. You do need to change them. What I'll do here is say 0.6. For the maximum, I'm going to go 0.8 the default value 0.7 and I'm going to reset these here so 0.6 and 0.8 and that's fine that's all set up for us so that's that's done the next thing to do is get a hold of 0.2x drag it down here and call it 0.2y and then make some changes just do that a capital Y and then make some changes. So we'll, we'll leave everything here the same. It's just the minimum max. Now, the minimum max, I'm going to make 0 and 1 for the Y. 
so that will be fine and we'll set it to 0.5 for the default again 0 and 1 there so that's all set up for us there and then all I've got to do is copy this down change its name to 0.3y and that completes it that will work fine for us okay that they're all set up they all work they all move everything is ready okay that's great so in my range mapper or my range mappers operator I'm going to come down and select 0.2x 0.2y and do the same for 0.3 so the x and the y open it up so that we can see everything clearly and then all I need to do is drag the espresso in come down to my user data and select the appropriate output ports again make it bigger connect everything up in fact we'll select the range mapper first so you'll see some changes in the spline as soon as I start doing this and there you go so that's everything connected and we've got a default set up there for our spline but we'll probably change it so let's just what I'll do is leave that there if I just go into my espresso for a minute and I select a new window for that and just move everything around a little bit arrange those there select the range mapper and now when I start moving the sliders you can see that the points do actually move so let's set up a default sort of setting for this we just bring say for I tell you what bring that one quite high and then with this one we'll push it sort of over there and then bring this one quite low okay so that's a default setting that will do for our spline we've got our animation timeline set back to zero if we record the positions for all of those at zero and then we flick through to frame 90 we can think about changing these so we'll just move this one over there a little bit bring this one say down there move this one perhaps yeah we can do that towards the center that's okay and then bring this one high somewhere sort of there somewhere that'll do and then we can record these as we are and then if we come back to frame zero and play the animation as you can see we're animating our spline fantastic so that's what this allows you to do this little insignificant icon here allows you to do a heck of a lot more than the basic range mapper node if you drag it into the editor you know so it's well worth knowing this stuff this sort of esoteric hidden stuff within Expresso so that just about completes this tutorial actually that's all I wanted to show you here I hope this has been worthwhile for you and you've learned some useful stuff here and it's given you a few ideas and perhaps inspired you to have a go at using this within your own projects but anyway that does complete this tutorial so if you've enjoyed this one please give it a thumbs up as I always say and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already then please do so and of course leave a comment that's always gratefully received and wherever you happen to be on social media please please share this video uh, because all this good stuff it really does help the channel to keep on going in the right direction but anyway that about completes this one so I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial